Hello, my name is Gary Sims, Manager of Authority. Today I'm at uh, Arm Tech Con 2015 and I've come to Undo Software to speak to Greg Law. Hi, Greg, how are you doing? Hey, yeah, good. Uh, tell good, us a bit well. about what you offer. Right, so we, uh, we help software developers to understand really what their code is doing, right? So all too often, uh, the reality of what a program does is almost but not quite what the developer expected it to be. And, uh, and this, is, this, is, this, is, this is debugging, right? So understanding your code at that deep level is, is, is very important. And what we can do is to record a little bit like CCTV, record the execution of a program as it runs uh, and allow then the developer to wind that tape back and forth. And they can take a recording, take it away, load it up somewhere else, a different time, different place, and see exactly what happened right down to the instruction level. Wow, great. Yeah. So I'd love to uh, show you a demo and we can, we can see it in action. That'd be like. great. Thank yeah? you very much. Yeah. All right. So this is my little uh, demo program here. It's a very small program, so we can kind of understand it for the purpose of this demo. This demo is in Eclipse, obviously. Uh, you don't have to use Eclipse. In fact, what we have is a, is a uh, reversible execution engine that different debuggers can plug into, right? So GDB is one, so you can use it anywhere. You use GDB and Eclipse. You have customers use it from within Emacs or the command line. Uh, also, ARM's DS5. Uh, in fact, we're inside DS5, so we, we have the feature known as Application Rewind inside DS5 and, and, and others as well. But I'm going to show it in Eclipse here. So this is my little program. Uh, and... Uh, all it does is store values and their square root in a cache, right? It's very simple uh, array, 100 elements, mapping values onto square roots. And uh, the function we care about today is called cache calculate, which just gives, given a value, it'll just loop through the cache, really dumb linear search, find a match, and return the square root. Or miss the cache, get the square root, put it in the cache, and then populate one, one entry either side on the basis that there's some kind of locality of reference, and then it returns the square root. The main function is just a unit test that loops forever, getting random values, passing them into cache calculate, and checking that what is returned really is the square root. So let me, uh, so here I am in the debug, ready to go, so let me run the program, and it's crashed, right? This demo is supposed to crash, <laughs> so, so here we are inside the, uh, inside the C library, there's no, there's no debug information here, so just uh, machine code, that's fine, we followed that in, and you can do what you do in every debugger, what programmers always do is to look up the call stack, right? Because debugging, as I said, it's that process of reality is deviated from my expectations and I need to find out why that happened and where the source of the problem is, right? Where did that, de where did that uh, deviation from reality, uh, from expectations first happen? So call stacks are very useful. You can see how you got here. So we look up the call stack and any debugger will do this. It gives you based on a kind of, it's a bit of a guess based on what's on registers and what's on the stack, but usually it's fine. As long as you've smashed your stack or something, you can see where you've been. And we can see here, all right, so cache calculate was given, uh, passed in value and it returns square root. And I can look up here and I can see that uh, we were pa passed in 255 and it returns zero. So this clearly is a bug. Zero is not the square root of 255. Uh, and I need to know why cache calculate returns what it did, right? So it's repeated steps of why did that happen now normal debuggers can't take you any further at this point right yep. you've got the cool stack it's that sliver of execution history uh and if what you want is in there great but also often it's not what we can do is rather better so i'm gonna hit this button here which is uncall which is like popping up the cool stack but it's no longer a guess uh, all the global state has gone back to what it was before and uh and now more interestingly than that i can start to step back in time right wow so if i click this back button we're actually unwinding the program's execution all the globals are, are going back to what they were now i've gone back to a point in time which is now just after cache calculate returned i'm at the top of this line the cache calculate has just returned so if i reverse step into i can actually step into cache calculate and see exactly what it did right how did that happen so you step back to here now it's returning from the cache so this is looking like uh, uh, some kind of corruption of the cache, which is always a horrible kind of bug to look at. Uh, and indeed, we're returning the ith entry of the cache, and I can see here that i is 90. So it's returning the 90th entry in the cache. Let me just come across and just quickly do some typing. Uh, if I can. So uh, I can look at the 90th entry in the cache here, and we can see, sure enough, it contains the garbage. So I've got data corruption in my cache. I don't know whether that was... No, a, a pointer error, a logic error, a threading error. I've got no idea who stomped on that data. But what I can do here, uh, uh, really, no, to really powerfully answer that, how did that happen? The question is, I can add a watch point. Uh, sometimes these are called data breakpoints. And usually in a debugger, what you would do is set that watch point and run the program forward until the data changes. What I'm going to do is run backwards until wow. the data changes. That's going to be the line of code that wrote to that data structure. So here we go. 
back in time. So we've gone back in time here now to a point in the past where the cache contains good data. The square root of 40 really is 6. Yeah. Actually, if I step forwards, this is a little bit like action replay watching sports on the television, right? So if I step forwards and watch that data in the top right-hand corner, you can see step, step, that's it. That's the corruption happening right there. So let's back up a little bit. Let's see, let's see what's, what, what really is going on. So this is definitely the smoking gun. We're writing value 2 and square root into the cache. Let me go up here and have a look, and I can see that uh, value 2 is minus 1. And so I tried to take the square root of minus 1, and it's given me 0 because you can't do that. So again, though, the question, once again, why did that happen? Actually, at this point now, we can kind of get away with, uh, with, with code inspection, but this is a demo, so let's just keep going. <laughs> let's add another watch point to value 2 and, uh, and go back again. So we go back in time, and we're going to go back. OK, so this is where value 2 is being set. So value 2 is being set to value minus 1, and value is 0. So here's our bug. We called the function with a value of 0, returned the right thing. But as a side effect, it left one entry in my cache corrupted. I didn't see that for some time later. Now, this obviously is a very small you know, canned demo, but actually it's, it's a canned demo of a real-life bug that uh, uh, we, one of our early real, real, real victories with one of our earliest customers was Cadence. And they, they're guys who write all that software for chip design and simulation. And one of their biggest customers was uh, uh, having a problem. They were trying to tape out the chip. They're running the simulation. Simulation ran for eight hours, and about one run in 300, they're running all these tests, and about one run in 300, the simulator would crash, right? Wow. So Cadence engineers were on site for three months, uh, and looking at the core file, the core file contains a minus one where there should be a pointer, <laughs> but there's no, you know, how did that happen, right? There's no information on how it got into that state. So that's when they came to us. They deployed UndoDB. I had to run a bunch of times, right, because it only failed one in 300 runs. And, you know, there is some overhead, there is some slowdown, so it took eight hours to run normally. With the inside undo, it took about 20 hours. Um, but they just ran it on a little server farm, a bunch of machines again and again and again until eventually they caught it, put a watch point on that minus one, and they went back Backwards. in time, and they had it fixed in three hours after spending three months getting, you know, getting nowhere That's on it. That's a fantastic story. So yeah. it's a great story, and it really shows how you know, the power of this stuff. But I always say it's not just for those really extreme cases. Uh, obviously, it's very useful for those bugs that otherwise wouldn't get fixed. But if you can repeatedly turn an afternoon debug session into 10 minutes, then that's a good win as well. Absolutely. Now, tell me a bit about operating system support. You support yeah. Android and Linux? Android right? and Linux, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Any yeah. particular version of Android? Uh, any, anything. It's any, uh, we need the Linux kernel um, or the Android kernel to be 2.6 or later, which is, these days is basically anything. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and that's it. Um, ARM. Uh, 32-bit today, 64-bit um, just been announced last week, so 64-bit ARM support is in beta right now, uh, and um, and also x86, 32, and 64-bit. Fantastic. And if people want to find out more, where do they go to? They go to our website, undo-software.com, uh, and you can find everything you need from there. That's excellent. Thank you very much. Brilliant.